I love Jonathan Majors. There was something in me that mm. felt, I bet he has a white girlfriend. And when Antoinette revealed to me <laughs> that he was <laughs> in Sweden somewhere with a blonde haired, blonde -haired. white woman, I don't celebrate that. I'm not going to celebrate their children that they have. <laughs> the oh my I'm God. It doesn't make me be like, yes. Like, you know, some people together, you're like, I love them together. That's how we all got here. A white woman and a black man. Help me through this. I don't have a logical answer. And what I get agitated about is because it's, it's commercially trendy for people to be in interracial relationships. It's become a presentation of diluted blackness. Like, well, aren't you happy to see like all these mixed families and Cheerios commercials? No, because the storytelling is not our, it's not a mixed story. The mm. storytelling is this is what's digestible for white people. I don't mind seeing black women with white men. It gets even more toxic oh, for me. Oh, you're toxic. What? Fit I don't. What? Hold on. Oh, VR tree. Oh, VR tree. Our virtual tree decorator. Come decorate a tree in VR or on the app or computer. Oh, VR tree. Oh, VR tree. Our virtual tree decorator. Oh, VR tree. Oh, VR tree. I'd like to buy your beauty. Well, you're in luck because the decor can be bought and picked up in store. Nice. Oh, VR tree. Oh, VR tree. I'd like to buy your beauty. Oh, VR tree. Oh, VR tree. Wait, did we mention NFTs? Not yet. An NFT you can score. Just saw some clues, maybe three or four. Oh, VR tree. Oh, VR tree. You could score an NFT. Oh, VR tree. Oh, VR tree. It's Christmas in the metaverse. We're Canada's Christmas store. Taking virtual halls with Christmas decor. Oh, VR tree. Oh, VR tree. It's a Canadian tire metaverse Christmas. Imagine one day you're sitting in Paris, you're sitting there having a fucking coffee, and terrorists roll through with AKs, and the person next to you has their brains blown out. You're gonna stand there and be like, waiting to die like a motherfucker. I'm gonna be like, bang, oh, I've seen that before. Okay, boom, boom, duck and dive in, take one terrorist out, next get the AK, go Rambo, take out all of fucking Pakistan with a G. I don't play games. Like this airport thing, I just wanted to die. You know what I'm saying? I don't know yeah. if you know anybody that lost your mom or not, or been in my shoes, but you feel like you're gonna die, you know? Yeah. You just yeah. wanna die. I felt like my I lost a part of a really big part of me, you know, when I lost my mom. She was my everyone. So tell me then Are you a fucking Are you a fucking master of all? Stand back. I am back So you read that you you you're not doing yourself any favors. You're not doing yourself any favors either. So what? Don't touch me. Don't fucking touch me. What have I done? What have I done wrong on this fight? What have I done wrong on this fight? What have I done wrong on this fight? I'm out here, babe. What have I done wrong on this fight? What have I done wrong on this fight? See, you haven't got an answer. You're absolute muppet. I told you. Just a reminder that I am very fat and very sexy, and I am a hundred percent glorifying obesity, and there's nothing you can do about it. And I walk around the mall for 10 minutes and get any fucking girl I want. That's a fucking fact. And I'll put a hair comb around the top of my fucking head when I'm walking around. You can't pull that shit, so don't talk to me. Thank you.
you enough. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, babe, I just headshot him. Nice. I love it. I'm just gonna pray on my knees right now that Kevin comes out in 30 seconds. Kevin the Cube, please come into Fortnite. I love you, Daddy. Okay, guys. We got 20 seconds. If you guys are gonna be getting the skin, you can use code FREAK309. Yeah. Okay, guys, 15 seconds until we can possibly see Kevin the Cube skin in Fortnite. He's gonna be my main skin. Okay, here we go, guys. Ready? Kevin the Cube, please. Five, four, three, two, one. Please, Kevin, please, Kevin, please, Kevin. We got him. We got Kevin. We got him. <sighs> guys, guys, I told you if I pray to Kevin, it happens. We own the Kevin the Cube skin now. Oh my god. Jeremy, do you think it's important to be personality trait oh, or mannerism from one of your money ball co stars or any one of them. They're sitting right here. That's, that that could be one of them. Oh, it's Phil Hoffman. Yeah, 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 no, I gotta go with a series. Okay. okay. Um, Consider manly. Some would say Arnold Schwarzenegger and his muscles. Others would say Sylvester Stallone and his amazing job, Justice. And some would even say Bruce Campbell and that chin. But what does an oddball such as myself consider manly? My Little Pony, friendship is magic. Now I know what some of you are thinking. You watch a show for little girls? Well, well, contrary to what you may think, there are more male teen to adult fans than there are young girl fans. That's how much of a phenomenon it has become. There are, t there are tons of internet jokes and hundreds of thousands of fans known as bronies. In case you can't tell, I'm one of them. Now, uh, I will be explaining the development, the plot, and what the show has become from the internet. Let's begin with the, let's begin with the plot. Oh, I mean the development. <clears throat> Lauren Foss came around the beginning of the My Little Pony series before Friendship is Magic. She found the older shows to be unimaginative, uninspired, and pretty much just trying to sell their products. So around the fourth show of My Little Pony, she was set as executive producer to, uh, to make the show with the story, to have the stories have to be complex and, you know, actually interesting. And, all, and also the art style would be completely different from the rest of the series, being more cartoonish. And the animation itself is Flash, which anyone who's used Flash before would know it is absolutely amazing animation. I can't necessarily show it as I can't show video, but the point is that it is absolutely amazing. Let's move on to the plot. <clears throat> in the magical land of Equestria, Pegasus and Unicorn alike roam amongst the world. Equestria is ruled by two princesses named Celestia and Luna. Celestia controlled the day, while Luna controlled the night. The Luna soon turns to the dark side of the Force, out of, out of jealousy of her sister. She is now known as Nightmare Moon, at least for the first episode, but I don't feel like I'm in any way. The main show is about, a, is about an intelligent, the main plot of the show is about an intelligent young mare named Twilight Sparkle, who meets five different friends. The, the adventurous Rainbow Dash, the country lack Applejack, the crazy party of Pinkie Pie, the shy Fluttershy, and the cell obsessed Rarity. <coughs> every every new adventure is a comp every new day is a new adventure, and new lessons to be learned, and new characters to meet and to meet. Not to mention, the cast is absolutely huge. Now now the internet comes in and makes the series 100 percent more popular and dare I say it, 20 percent cooler. And it all started on 4chan. 
Uh, on 4chan, there was a user that said, OMG Hack Stores, this show is amazing! Other people gave it a shot and they agreed. OMG Hack Stores, this show is amazing! So, they gave it a chance and the show started a bunch of internet jokes, such as good old derby hoops over here. And there was even a high school student that calculated Rainbow Dash's move, known as the Sonic Rainbow, calculates at an average speed of 1,653 miles per second, which translates to about 15 Gs, more average in the human body, and breaks the color spectrum itself along with the sound barrier. That's right. A pony broke the sound barrier. Look it up, kids! Now, in conclusion, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is a fantastic show. It deserves all the credit it gets. And honestly, I know some of you are skeptical when I'm talking about this. Because, you know, it's a show for little girls. But, you know, you gotta give it a chance. And you may be surprised. Become a brony today. That's my speech. Thank you for listening. She says, I wish that I could be like the cool kids. Cause all the cool kids, they seem to fit in. I wish that I think I'm cute. You lose challenge. What? Gen Z's trying to what? Cancel Eminem. Gen Z's trying to cancel Eminem? Honey, that's cute. Listen, little kitties, let me make this quite clear. This man was around even before you were here. So what, you're all mad because the man was a lyricist while all your rappers are a mumbling gibberish? No, go ahead and shut your mouth. Better yet, go and sit your ass in time out because boy was running laps even before you could walk. Hell, boy was spitting balls even before you could talk. So no, I'm afraid you're null in, boy, dear. I'm afraid your opinion don't matter here because one day you'll grow up and see how everyone went and forgot about Z. Can I get If you ever want to fall in love, if you ever want to bet on us, if you ever want to be my one, I'll be waiting. If you ever want one more night, if you ever want to make things right, if you ever want to change your mind, I'll be waiting. If you ever want to fall in My son just taught me this one. Why were bikinis invented? You to separate the hairy from the dairy. Proud mama. I love how Gen Z calls themselves Zoomers, but they're all on their phone like they're zombies. Like, what? Okay, sure. They'd be like, Hi, I'm Gen Z. I'm a slave to the system just as much as you. I went undercover at a Trump rally. In my 16 years on this planet, I don't think I've seen a man with as much perseverance as Trump. Well, I truly believe that he's used of God to save the people from the slavery and bondage we've been going through. Sin City was a mafia Angels like you You wanna get your fucking ass off my fucking tire? Excuse Get the fuck off my truck now These wheels cost more than your fucking life Get down Yeah, that's what I fucking thought You wanna get your fucking Heating is currently broken in my house, so I'm heading down to London, I'm checking into the Savoy, and I'm going to make full use of their wonderful hot water.
So let's get ready for the day. My Intimus Me base layer is already on, so I'm going to start the outfit off with my Black Watch Serafina London dress. I am just so in love with this dress, it's unbelievable. Next up is a pair of 80 denier tights from Chalcedonia. I'm cold. <laughs> In my hair, I'm going to wear my black velvet headband from Clementine and Mint. For my boots, I'm going to wear my Louboutin cape boots. For my fragrance, I'm wearing High Grove Bouquet from Penhaligons. For my coat, I'm going to wear my Italian wool maxi coat from my collection with Karen Millen. My handbag today is my 25 Birkin Madame Cellier in black with gold hardware. And that is my outfit ready for the day. I'm off to warm up. Let me know what you think in the comments. You're not, you're, uh, 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 nice and slow. You're not drinking this, right? You guys got to keep up with me, camera guys. They can't, oh, they can't move. Because it's not on a tripod or anything. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to move around here. Is that cool? Is that cool? Is that cool? Um... I honestly don't even know how you're going to respond after listening to like three eloquent speeches. But I'll do my best. When, uh, when Dan asked me to make this speech, I was a bit nervous because I was kind of low on inspiration. So, I don't know why you're laughing. It's pretty serious. So, uh, I asked a few of my already married friends, you know, what's it like to be married? You know, hopefully that... That love will come through and they'll tell me about it and I'll be able to you know, get some inspiration. <clears throat> I'm, a f I'm a man of few words, so I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. <clears throat> oh, I will project as best I can, believe me. So uh, when I talk to my married friends about marriage, they really threw me some tidbits, some, you know, nuggets of wisdom. And I took that in, I internalized it. <laughs> and then I wrote it down in the format of a testimonial for an infomercial. An infomercial on marriage. I'd like to share that with you now. Kevin from Pennsylvania writes, Guys, be serious. <laughs> I used to cry when I masturbate. <laughs> Guys. Focus. But now, I have sex with my wife. Thanks, marriage. <clears throat> it goes on. <laughs> Julie from New Jersey writes. Now that we're married, I don't have to swallow anymore. Thanks, marriage. Mike from New Jersey writes, no, she certainly doesn't swallow anymore. But once a month, she lets me put it in her pooper. And um, thanks marriage. And, uh, and so I think what we can, Robin, focus. I'm, I'm right here, I'm right here. Focus guys. And so I think what we can, I think what we can learn from this, guys, I'm giving a speech here. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Keep your composure. And so I think what we can learn from all this is that sometimes, you know, marriage is about compromise. No, seriously. Marriage is about compromise. Uh, just like any relationship, friendship, or whatever. But in marriage, when you compromise, you have to know when to spread your butt sheets. You just have to know, like, well, you know what? I didn't let him do this, but uh, I'll, I'll bend over and take it in the kisser. And that's important. That's important. But also, you know, I think what we can all learn from this is that two people come together, they find each other. And in this mixed up, crazy, cynical world that we live in, you two are so truly blessed to have found each other. Like, really. Because there are some people who will never, ever find what you have. And those people will be doomed to forever cry while masturbating. <laughs> like I did this morning. And now I'd like to share with you a poem. And uh, this is written by... This was actually performed by Neil Patrick Harris. And uh, when I first... Hey, how are you? Well, I mean, I think it's, I think it's pretty good. I guess, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, congratulations. Cheers. What a nice hand, ladies and gentlemen, all four lovely champagne toasts. Give them a nice hand. We're going to give you guys a couple of moments to finish your first course, and we'll see you on our dance floor as we get ready to celebrate with our bride and groom in just a bit. Thank you. for President Snow. You can torture us and bomb us and burn our districts to the ground. But do you see that? Fire is catching. And if we burn, you burn with us. The last thing before we go tonight, Hollywood's heroines. Jennifer Lawrence, superstar, recently sat down with Viola Davis, star of the new action film Woman King, for a discussion hosted by Variety magazine. And one part of their conversation has been getting a lot of attention today. Watch this. But I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie yeah. because mm -hmm. it wouldn't work. We were told girls and boys can both identify with a male lead. But yeah. boys cannot identify with a female lead. Oh, absolutely. And it just makes me so happy every single time I see a movie come out that just blows through every single one of those beliefs and proves that it is just a lie to yeah. keep certain people out of the movies, to keep certain people in the same positions that they've always been in. I'm sorry, what? Did you catch that? Lawrence said, quote, Nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie before she starred in The Hunger Games in 2012. Well, for fact's sake, I know some very special women who would like a word. Our girl J-Law is forgetting some major female icons that came before her. Sigourney Weaver in Alien as Ellen Ripley. Angelina Jolie, AKA Lara Croft in Tomb Raider. How about Kate Beckinsdale as Celine in Underworld? You can never forget Halle Berry as Catwoman or Uma Thurman in Kill Bill. Demi Moore, of course, in G.I. Jane. And the one and only hero of heroes, Pam Greer, as the legendary Foxy Brown. Now, this next one was a TV show, not a movie, but I cannot leave out the most amazing Linda Carter as Wonder Woman. So while what Lawrence said about women not starring in action movies before her is obviously not true, let's not overlook her main point. Jennifer Lawrence said, quote, we were told girls and boys can both identify with a male lead, 
but boys, they cannot identify with a female lead. Well, box office numbers over the years have shown that is also not true. We just laid out there a very long list of very successful female-led movies that prove it. So I say, let's keep these women leading in roles in big, big movies and lead roles in the boardroom.